From Islamabad, Colonel Bashir Wali Mohammed, former DG of the IB of Pakistan from Delhi, G. Patsati, former Indian High Commissioner to Pakistan from Lahore, Barrister Zafrullah Khan, who is the President of the Watan Party, and uh, from Delhi, Maruf Raza, from, uh, from Karachi, Zafar Hilali, former Park Ambassador to the US, and from Delhi, General G.D. Bakshi, former Research Fellow at the IDSA. We have three Indian and three Pakistani panelists. And my first question is to Colonel Bashir Wali Muhammad. Now, what's going to happen, uh, Colonel Bashir Wali Muhammad, is that you know India, with its clout and greater cooperation from, uh, from foreign intelligence agencies, uh, greater cooperation with the Gulf and with the United States of America, uh, and also better human intelligence. Uh, uh, this is, by the way, this is the latest picture that has come out there of this coward called Yasin Malik, his mask being taken off, and uh, Yasin Bhatkal, of Yasin Bhatkal, and, uh, and what Yasin Bhatkal is actually saying uh, to, his, uh, to his captors, that he's absolutely shocked as how, at how he's been caught. Uh, my first question about Yasin Bhatkal is to Colonel Bashir Wali Muhammad. Colonel Bashir Wali Muhammad, now this whole Karachi project of Pakistan is about to be unraveled. Uh, you know, the whole attempt to try and put an Indian face to Pakistan sponsored and backed terror. So, uh, what, is the, what is the view of Pakistan right now on the slow but sure unraveling of the Karachi project? Uh, well, I, I have, uh, since I'm. I have no idea as to when in this. I just came to know through this program that uh, 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 that this chap has been uh, arrested. Who is this chap? What he has been doing? Uh, well, I have no idea and uh, as such I will not be able to comment on that. But as far as all this, what uh, the introduction part which went on, that you talk less about Yasin, you talk more about the ISI. Yeah. And your people across, they <laughs> just forget the, wh what they are doing, uh, you know, what they are doing in uh, 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 the Balochistan. You know, there are 24 camps there in Balochistan. Uh, they are being sponsored, they are being done by the Iraq. Okay, there are people in the, uh, uh, Ikra, uh, the Kabul, across, uh, uh, you know, are cornered and all that stuff. So I think this is a ongoing. This uh, this going on unless we unless we decide uh, that sit decide as to what has to be done. This destabilization business that whether that we are Pakistan is destabilizing India. No, India not, is doing no, to Pakistan. You can't destabilize India. Uh, no, you can't destabilize India. You no, can no, keep you can keep trying to destabilize India. But what has been actually happening, Colonel Bashir Wali Mohammed, is that this whole Pakistani business that will try and build up deniability. You see, around 2000, 2001, you were afraid of being caught. So what you did was you tried to build deniability. Uh, this is this this is the whole Karachi project. You try and use some fugitive Indians. You uh, you you back them uh, with uh, with money and funds and arms and to keep up the terror pressure on India. Now we've we, caught the we biggest have, we caught we the biggest of the fish. We, just, caught, you know, we caught we caught the biggest we, we caught the biggest of the fish. You know, and his name you, is Yasin Mal. You Yasin keep Matka. doing all that. You see, so okay, you keep doing all that. As far as we are concerned, I mean there are a lot of people over here also this uh, acquisition and this counter acquisition will go on there will be no end un unless we sit and decide as what to do no, you okay see. so this uh, with this your man I'll get what happened you, uh, what happened in the bombay let's just just listen what what happened in the uh, bombay you know the uh, case what, what, what was what, in the parliament case? your own agency your own agency your own that people what, say that what, was the ra, ra, i mean it was what, the what established what, things. What raw established okay. You're not so sure about what you're talking about, sir. I think you're completely wrong in this case. You know, as far as... I know what I'm so talking. The so you also keep... Uh, okay? So you don't, you don't know so what you you're talking about. So you also keep your... This thing, okay. Sir, 2000 no, 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 I know very sir, 2006, much. Okay. Bombay... Okay, please, the two, uh, two, will two, you, uh, will sir, you sir, shut up? Sir, I don't feel... I'm sorry and I don't feel like talking to you a person like you. Sir, that's all right, sir. Sir, you can go away from the program. That's all right. You see, we have to face the facts here, and sometimes the facts are bitter. They're not going to stop me from telling Colonel Bashir Wali Muhammad uh, the facts. Uh, Colonel Bashir Wali Muhammad chooses not to answer. I wonder why. I think that itself tells you something. Now, Maruf, is the Karachi project as much of a myth as uh, Colonel Bashir Wali Muhammad has tried to make it out to be? 
Arnab, see, the Karachi project has been referred to not just by Indian and Indian writers in the Indian media. Yeah. This is beginning to figure in the writings of a lot of international academic experts who recently published books and documents in which, in case of Pakistan, you know, they tend to, to avoid being labeled for anti-Indian direct proxy activities. They may, for purposes of deniability, give it another name internally. Yeah. Just like a lot of their proxies are being given different names, they travel on different travel documents. But the fact of the matter is the basic working principle of the project seems to make sense to Pakistan. It made sense to Pakistan to be able to have deniability and to find pockets in India where there was a certain degree of anti-Indian sentiment and disgruntlement and exploit that to their advantage and say, see your own people. Remember, it was at about that time that President Bush in his speech had welcomed Prime Minister Manmohan Singh to say that here is the Prime Minister of a country which has one of the largest Muslim populations in the world and not a single Al-Qaeda member or affiliate. And that obviously pinched some hardliners across the border and they said, well, we'll show you that they can be terror and terror linkages in your Muslim fraternity and community also. But having gone from that, now whether it's Bhatkal, whether it is uh, Abdul Karim Tunda, whether it is Jundal, they've all referred to it. They've all been traveling on Pakistani uh, travel documents. Where did they get them? And they have sufficient evidence through their family members and others of people being here, people going in large numbers. One of the disclosures of Abdul Karim Tunda was also the fact that hundreds of youth from Maharashtra, Gujarat, elsewhere went across to Pakistan to seek training post-2002. Whatever their reasons, but the fact of the matter is training was being provided, funding was being provided, the good colonel just left, he was upset. But the fact of the matter is they can keep saying that India is doing this in Baluchistan, but I politely asked the Pakistani guests two questions. One is, that even assuming that the allegations to some extent have some merit, what was happening in Baluchistan before India got involved there? Baluchistan has been a sole No, but let's not Pakistan go to Baluchistan yet. Since no, 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 Maruf, 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 okay. let, let's, now, not, let's, back, not, let's, let's, let's not go to Baluchistan, to... let's narrowly focus on this no, man no, I'm coming, I'm called coming... Bhatkal, right? Let's narrowly focus on him, yes, and then I'll go to Zafar Yeah, Bhatkal, now see, the thing is, Arna, uh, Bhatkal is very clearly established that sometime in 2005-2006, he went with his father to uh, Dubai and that's where he got turned into uh, the Indian Mujahideen network, was there, became uh, thereafter a very vicious leader of the Indian Mujahideen network. Please remember, one of Bhatkal's attributes to Pakistan and attributes to his capability was to set up a network which did not have any telecommunication linkages. He was basically interacting with various groups. The second thing was that his hand and through various evidences that have been found from 2007, the Mumbai train blast, he was involved in hundreds of killings and many more than that of injuries to people. The Jaipur bomb blast. There after that, the bomb blast in Hyderabad, the bomb blast in other cities of India. Precisely. It's all listed out. It's documented, as you have said. And it falls More than out. 200 people upwards are responsible. He is responsible for their deaths. Now, Maruf. if Pakistan doesn't want to own up to that, I just put one question to my Pakistani guest. On the 23rd of August, on Pakistani television, Pakistan's media was talking of religious strife within Pakistan. What the media was not talking about was it was basically for the first time in Pakistan that the Shia groups had begun to stand up to Sunni dominance and the fighting was between two Muslim groups. Now Pakistan says that communal tension in India creates terrorism and it's not Pakistan's doing. Why is there tension between two prominent groups of the Islamic, uh, Islamic fraternity? Pakistan must answer that because unless Pakistan wheels itself away from this anti-India doctrine which has led to terror within Pakistan, Pakistan will continue to be a larger victim you of terrorism this. than we are. Now, now, now Zafar Eleli, it's like this. Uh, your Karachi project, you see, your, your Indian Mujahideen, the people you backed, sponsored and paid for, uh, they have been exposed. Right? The chief operating officer of the Indian Mujahideen. Mr. Eleli, you can hear me or you can't hear me? Mr. Eleli, you can hear me, I hope. Not very well, okay. but I, 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 can, I, can, I can get the drift of what you're saying. Let me just complete the question. The question is, Mr. Hilali, this, that the chief operating officer of the Indian Mujahideen has been caught. The chairman and managing director and the CEO of the Indian Mujahideen are with you in Pakistan. 
this group has become dysfunctional, your Karachi project, it's a matter of days and weeks, Mr. Eleli, before the entire international media exposes the confessions of this man, Yasin Bhatkal. Why are you waiting for this to happen? Why, don't, why doesn't your country just confess and then reign in the ISI? You, you know, this is now going to be the biggest well, global embarrassment if you continue to be defiant. Because now we have not a dossier, you see. We have a human dossier. We can put this man on tape and telecast his confessions to the whole world and you'll have nothing to answer for it. It's going to be worse for you, Mr. Hilali, than the testimony of Omar Khayyam who exposed the ISI. It is going to be worse for you, Mr. Hilali, than Willie it, will it Bridget's testimony. It's going to be worse for you than all that. It's time well, for a confession, isn't it, Mr. Hillary? Yeah, well, it's a, bit, a little bit of Alice in Wonderland. Uh, what I want to tell you is, first of all, my congratulations if you have caught a terrorist. That means there are about 4,999 4 still to go, I'm sure. And good luck to you in catching terrorists. Secondly, we catch actually a little more than you. We catch about three or four a month who are armed Taliban criminals who have been funded by you from your seven and ten consulates in Afghanistan near our border who are, I suppose, giving tourist visas. Uh, well, we catch them and we don't make a song and dance about them and they tell us a lot about what your antics are in Afghanistan. Now, the question is, I was asked by an Indian correspondent about Mullah Tunda or whatever his name is. Uh, he apparently has confessed that Mr. General Hamid Gul was his handler. <laughs> well, if you were kind enough to send Mullah Tunda up to me, I have keep him for half an hour, he will confess that Mrs. Sonia Gandhi was actually the one who was giving him all the th uh, thoughts that he had. Please, now. Let's get serious. But why don't you, why uh, don't you answer the question if seriously? You, if you, the, the question is no, very I, serious, Mr. Hilary. There is no question. No, no, these are all allegations. No, Mr. Hilary, these are very serious questions. And I would like to tell you this very seriously, what? Mr. Mr. Hilary. You see, you are aware of it, this all. And we are talking today about something very important. We are, we, we are on the verge of exposing your Karachi project. You know the June 2010 testimony of David Coleman Headley. It confirmed the information regarding the Karachi project. This is your ISI LET brainchild under which IM recruits are trained to engage in subversive and terrorist activities in India. Headley in his confession, in case you have forgotten Mr. Hilali, said that the IM leaders, Riaz and Iqbal Bhatkal, the CEO and CMD respectively of this group, the Indian Mujahideen, are living under the protection of the ISI and the LET in Karachi. So I am being so specific. Am I to assume, Mr. Hilali, that you are being diversionary with your attempt to generalize and make humor out of this? I am being very specific. I am getting a counter to you from General Bakshi now. I'll come back to you after that. General Bakshi, your response to uh, Zafar Eleli. Let's not digress. Let's be you very know, focused. I would today. like to, I, I, I would like to, you know, highlight certain aspects of Operation Karachi. 2003 was the time when Operation Parakram had just gotten over and the Americans were putting a tremendous amount of pressure on Pakistan to desist from, you know, supporting or using terrorism as an instrument of state policy. Now, this was the time when the ceasefire on the line of control was also negotiated and Musharraf was prevailed upon to reduce infiltration that he was doing into Jammu and Kashmir. This is the time the ISI felt it had to change operational track. And to that extent, it had launched Operation Karachi, whereby 80 Simi youths were taken to the same camps in Baluchistan, trained there for three months, not in the use of small arms, yeah, yeah. but trained in fabricating improvised explosive devices from commercially available off-the-shelf chemicals like ammonium nitrate, like hydrogen peroxide, like niogel and slurry. And Yasin Bhatkal and the Bhatkal brothers, you know, and Qureshi, they were some of the kingpins of this entire first gang of 80. These were then sent back to India and they in turn ran camps in Baroda, you know, close to the forests in Gujarat, in, in central India and in Karnataka. And by 2007, they had launched an offensive a bombing offensive across all major Indian cities. Hear that. 
the whole aim was deniability the entire narrative was this is home grown terror you are getting paid back for gujarat you know and we had a lobby unfortunately in this country which you know gave credence to this narrative unfortunately now this lie has been nailed we have the kingpin in our custody and once these people are in custody they sing like canaries oh they should they tape and should be put out in the next few days i i'm sure they will they will in the next few days i'm sure they will i am sure you know, they will this is this, the whole this is this is very damaging revelations on what pakistan's isi so, has precisely so, so been you see so, up to. so you see this is the problem now barrister zafrullah khan is a senior advocate and he's the president of the watan party of pakistan barrister zafrullah khan all we are saying here today we got one of the kingpins you have dawood and you have the other two batkal uh, brothers you give up the batkal brothers and you hand over dawood and then you admit that you were trying all this while to try and create homegrown terror in india then we can have a fresh start with you all that you need to do because if you don't confess what is going to happen in the next two or three months barrister is that you will be exposed i can assure you by november or yes. december your country will be exposed internationally now after the arrest of batkal can you risk it can pakistan yes, risk mukherjee, that kind of exposure which is sure to happen mr mukherjee one thing is very clear that we are ourselves victim of terrorism we are not in position to expose terrorism at all neither do i by hater nor i sell hatred but i tell you one thing the media on both side are not very responsible similarly the commercial religious leader they are making money out of it and they are creating a big issues for nothing in fact if there is some error somewhere why should we blame india and why india should blame pakistan instead well, we should we, try we, to go and forget what has happened ma, and ma, barrister seven years ago we separated sir we separated now we must have friendship and because unless we have a friendship we both country will never make progress neither sir, can that sir that's a you now you can draw so but that's an alice in the wonderland situation this, barrister that's an alice in wonderland situation you see you must you we are talking about sir, something I, extremely I, serious i know what you're sir, saying i appreciate I, your sentiment i am appreciate your sentiment I, but you're I, not being realistic barrister at all thank you thank you thank you let me tell you that i myself did 2011 the target killing case in karachi and today i am again the party and a council in that case by myself but i i could assure you there's a, i don't see any indian involvement there i don't see is our own doings is i think is a commercial interest in that part of the pakistan which is creating all sort of terrorism if there is any terrorism imported i think is imported by the muslim countries in pakistan today because they want their own philosophy their own ideology be promoted in pakistan well, i don't why, know why then because i think why then why then I, I why then do why this. why then do reasonable people like zafar hilali not accept okay. not accept that the entire strategy went wrong and that it is not in the interests of pakistan to let the isi decide the strategy anymore uh, my my question is to my question is to uh, g parthasarthi and then i'm going to open this up g parthasarthi how important is yasin batkal as a catch how can we extract information from batkal to corner pakistan so the question is did you pick up two people three uh, people from there was no falling whatsoever in pakistan i don't know if they have falling in india or not what you're talking about no, 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 but no, no, i could assure okay. you one thing we have been played up as the north core as the north korean and south korean being played by outside forces sir i assure we you must be sensible enough sir i assure you i assure you i assure, you, the, I assure you, you all you all you need to do is put the isi in its place and there are a lot of sensible people in india who will then talk to you more sensibly g parthasarthi how do we extract as much information and mileage of yasin batkal's arrest sir the okay, i think is, both uh, zafar hilali and uh, I, there's nothing at all here in pakistan nothing at all about this in pakistan so there will not pakistan be your, no there may not be then i think i think the picture of this man i'll tell you i'll put it on tv now by the way let's put it up and i pakistan request i request every i request every pakistani channel to put up the picture of this man and let the picture of this man be shown across all pakistani channels so that the people of pakistan and his handlers in pakistan know what happens what happens when you try and carry out a project like the karachi project now i'd like to welcome g parthasarthi please he hasn't spoken yet yes mr parthasarthi so i, I think both uh, zafar hilali and the uh, 
and the lawyer have, have, have made up certain points. The basic thing is this, that uh, you can't blame everybody in Pakistan for this, but there is a military intelligence establishment. I mean, they can't forget that Osama bin Laden stayed there for 11 years, fathered, fathered uh, three children, two of them in a government hospital in Haripur, lived with 11 people for, uh, for 11 years or 6 years next to the military academy and nobody knew about it. So I think Pakistan's international credibility on this is at its lowest. The, the, the important thing about Bhatkal is that condemn, over the last I, few I, years, I, you should condemn ISI. there are people you in Pakistan tired of this. Not good enough. The, 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 no, no, just a minute. Just a minute, just a minute. I'm not, I'm not, sir, I'm not taking issue with you. I'm merely saying that over the last few years, even the Saudis are fed up of this. Most of the people who have been handed over are based on initial American inputs. But people who were caught in Dubai and in Saudi Arabia and handed over by the Gulf countries to us because they are tired of this. Now, Pakistan must realize that its own problems. Let me, let me go to the Indian Mujahideen. The Indian Mujahideen was initially put in touch by the ISI with four groups. It was the, Lashk it was the Jashe Mohammed, it was the Harkatul Jihad ul Islami, it was the Hezbollah Mujahideen, and it was one other I forget. Now, of these four, two, three, two have been dumped by the ISI. The Jashe Mohammed for attempting to kill President Musharraf, Harkatul Jihad ul Islami because it is with Al Qaeda, the Lashkar e Taiba alone remains. And sir, you are telling me nothing happens in Lahore. The Lashkar e Taiba and the Jamaat ud Dawa are uh, international terrorist organizations. They are being funded by the Chief Minister of Punjab, Mr. Shahbaz Sharif, from the Punjab government's not. budget. These are Pakistan of published figures. Now, these, they, uh, well, it's, it's, it's there on the budget of your Punjab government. And it's a published document, sir, of your Punjab government, of the grant to the Jamaat ud Dawa. Now, so what I'm saying is, yes, to the ordinary, per I mean, Zafar would feel very terrible about the sort of sectarian groups these people are in touch with. The Arkatul Jahadul Islami, the Jaisha Mohammed, they're all joining the Taliban for massacring Shias across the northwest frontier Sorry, province. A commercial Punjab. organization. Now, they have been done. No, sorry, they're not. They're, 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 they're not commercial. They're not commercial. They were funded they and armed by the Pakistan army. They are making and money. And they've turned against the Pakistan state. Well, they've turned against the Pakistan state. Sir, Whether they make is, money, I don't know. This is stigma but on our people, face. This is the sort of contacts your eyes are gave commercials. Them. I agree with you, sir. I'm, Both. I'm, 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 I'm not dry. I'm not making. I'm merely making a point that you must understand that it is easier for us now because these people are a threat to you, which the ISI does not bother about. They are a threat to the Americans and the Gulf countries, and they are a threat to us. So we've got enough people cooperating with us to get them. And get them we will. Get them we will. Now, of the, this, this gentleman's two brothers are still in Karachi, the, uh, he, and they operate out of the house of Dawood Ibrahim. And Dawood Ibrahim used to live, live has two houses, one Nobody in Clifton, one in the Defence yeah. Housing Nobody Society, knows him. which Mr. Hilal. Uh, I let mean, you complete. must say, so I have, I have driven Sir, let him complete house. one minute. I have, I, I have, Mr. I have, I have been in your country. I have driven past his house in the Defence Housing Society. Your own Pakistani driver told me, you have mafia don here. So, and I mean, let, let's be to. real. So all, I, all, I, all right, all right. I am talking on the basis of facts. I lived in Clifton. I know where his house is located. So the, the fact of the matter is, these games should end, and we should get to being good neighbors. But if this continues, in the belief yes. that India can be destabilized with violence, this is not a calculation no. of the civilian hierarchy. It is your military's calculation. And your military is bringing grave damage to your own country. So, so let's go back to Zafar Supporting Hilary. the Taliban in Afghanistan. No, so, so, playing so, play, playing no, with all so, these so, so uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, hardcore Salafi groups no, within so, Pakistan. So let's, let's go back to Zafar Hilali. And Mr. Hilali's contention is very simple today. The contention is you are willing to risk your entire international reputation today for three people. Dawood Ibrahim, 
रियाज भटकल एंड इकबाल भटकल मिस्टर जफर इले एंड हाफिज मोहम्मद हाफिज सईद दाऊद इब्राहिम रियाज भटकल एंड इकबाल भटकल you know uh, you are I, you are willing to speak speak your like entire to... international credibility today for these four people how can you as a former diplomat you know support something as ridiculous and insane as that mr hilali yeah. i believe the solution is people to people contact no no that's all right zafar hilali is trying to respond na uh, the first thing i would Open like to take up the point that mr prata Mr. Hilali, please. And the point that Open Mr. Prata Sati raised about about uh, 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 I, I'll answer that too. Can I just be a little logical? Um, the point that Mr. Prata Sati raised about raised about the fact that Osama bin Laden was able to procreate, or his, rather his wives, and he were able to procreate children in government hospitals in Pakistan. I think Mr. Prata Sati knows Pakistan very well. he also knows that when there is a 25 million dollar offer to 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 rat on someone i tell you it's a very tempting offer mr dr afridi who tried like hell to find out who was inside that mansion who tried no 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 i mean it's a government hospital yaar yeah? what are you saying was it in an isi <laughs> clinic in some pri he just said government hospital now if you take people like that there no, we have 25 million dollars on their head it's unlikely that somebody won't rat that that's now, guessing the point is now. this that that's guessing it, that's, that's not that's, 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 that's no, no, it's, uh, well i wish we could i uh, i wish we could keep our secrets as much as you think we can we can't number 1 no, yes, it's a very because, leaky no, no, society yes, ask mr prata sathi yes. he will tell you if we were keeping uh, uh, indian gundas if we were if we were keeping them uh, in karachi how the hell was he able to drive past their house and how did his driver know obviously either it's true or it's false if he believes it's true then we are a leaky society now you're trying to make me to understand that somebody with a 25 million dollar uh, singing on his head can be hidden and procreate and walk around and take walks and go out with his wives yeah, sorry that, that's exactly secondly, what happened secondly, no, i know i know, it, I, know dawa, I know i know Jamaat. it sounds i know it sounds ridiculous it sounds foolish fuladi ridiculous but unfortunately that is what pakistan did in the case of osama zafar okay. ilali we all we all commiserate okay. with pakistan okay. Okay. For, for the right. osama expose we commiserate with you and i know <laughs> that for reasonable diplomats like you it is very embarrassing to face answer questions on osama but see mr bilali this is what the isi has reduced you to you see this is what the isi has reduced reasonable people <laughs> yeah. like you to to having to bat for for sheltering no, osama sorry. now my critical I, question we want to know all indians you know, want to all indians want to know why uh, are these two fellows riyaz and ikbal batkal so important just tell us why we caught we caught the I, other guy i i i actually caught, you know let me tell you i might be very today. ignorant but they are so important that i swear i have never heard of their names till you mentioned it today you go and ask an average pakistani <laughs> who's batkar and mulla tunda or whatever his name was and this character who you've just caught <laughs> not a single no pakistani Uh, even people who are well informed would have heard of them now you tell us that these are all people hibernating in india creations of the isi please understand now you know please it please it, sir, it, tell it me. convinces nobody sir, you keep thinking me. that the international sir, community will sir, be fooled me. sir tell me i i i don't i don't, I don't take responsibility for the or this i don't character. i don't i don't take responsibility uh, uh, for uh, the uh, awareness uh, level uh, of the average zafar I, zafar okay. zafar one zafar one little point Zafar, for one little point i'm sure you've yeah. heard of javed miandad you have yes, well yes. I, there was a huge marriage of uh, of dawood ibrahim's son, uh, son to to javed ikbal's daughter javed miandad's daughter in dubai and they all had come from pakistan our chaps have got there even the flight 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 particulars i i, I, I unfortunately I yes all i come i from karachi No, no, very much right. indeed. We uh, we all. It was or it was headline. It's not headline. It was news. It was. 
It was news oh. that Miyadad's daughter has married a chap called Daud Sir, Ibrahim Miyadad's Singh son. and that this chap was a notorious Miyadad's gunda wanted somebody. in India. I, we've all heard about all this, but I've never seen this chap shopping in Karachi. No, obviously I've never he's known. not going I mean, to be shopping in Karachi. Uh, if no, this no, no, chap is in Karachi, no, no, you seem no, to no, know I never everything. Said, nobody, said, nobody said shopping in Karachi. I mean, let's be a little reasonable you know, here. Your all, intelligence all agency is too smart to let yeah, you say. All, all, I'm, all I'm saying is, and I'll come back to Maruf, but I think General GD Bakshi wants to come. You see, oh, I'm no. saying today, General Yasir uh, Zafar Ali, I don't take responsibility for the lack of awareness of the average Pakistani, but I know that if you look at the testimony of Omar Khayyam, I forget, take, let's take away all Indian evidence and all Indian charges. The testimony of Omar Khayyam, if you remember, accused with six other men of plotting a bombing campaign in Britain, right, using fertilizer-based explosives. You remember this? A very embarrassing for Pakistan, so embarrassing. Now, after testifying about the terrorist training camp in Pakistan, where he claimed the ISI handled explosives training, Khayyam refused to carry on giving evidence because the ISI had threatened his family. Now, this is not an Indian case, right? This is, well, this, you remember this, I think, September 2006. Whole, before the whole world you are being yeah. exposed, you are being exposed every day. You know, the whole know, world you know, can't be lying, Mr. Zafar Ileli. And why are you as a reasonable person they, they, batting for these, batting for these infamous brutes? Why are you doing it? Your God country forbid. is sinking because God of this. Forbid. Because of God this. forbid. Your country but is sinking I'm, because of no, this. No, no. God forbid and we will that get. I will bat for anyone like them. But let me just say this, that there are terrorist camps in Pakistan, in North Waziristan, where people are producing all kinds of weapons and ammunitions and that we have cleaned out one area, South Waziristan, we cleaned out no. Swat, we have to go into North Waziristan. I don't deny that these terrorists have their, shall Maruf. I say, safe areas, if you like. They are there, but no, to no, say Maruf. that they are Maruf. there because Maruf the to ISI, you. they're killing Order. the ISI. Maruf. Five ISI uh, uh, officers Maruf. have been attacked. Mr. Hilali. What Mr. are Hilali. you saying, ISI? Mr. Hilali. For God's Mr. Hilali. sake. Mr. Yeah. Mukherjee. Mr. Hilali, sir. Mr. Can I come in? Mr. Hilali, sir. Hilali, sir. Okay. Okay. Hand, Maruf, Maruf, Maruf first, then, then General Bakshi after Maruf. We gold together. Sir, sir, please, please let me come in, sir. Please let me come in. Mr. Hilali. All the facts that you have given, assuming they are facts, they are all about Pakistan battling terror in Pakistan's Western yeah, Front. Basically. It's like America's war on terror is against terrorists who attack America. They call it a global war on terror. That's America's problem. When have you confronted terror groups on your eastern side and the terror camps that operate with the lashkar e -Toiba? You, I mean, it's, it's public knowledge. And if you don't accept public knowledge, let me give you a few factual evidences. Stephen Tankill's book, Storming the World Stage, about lashkar e -Toiba. Imtiaz Gul's book, The Al-Qaeda Connection. Both have chapters on the ISI and their boys. You don't want to confront them. Even analysts all over the world say that if India and Pakistan are to move forward, then Pakistan has to give some deliverables on the ground. What stops you from banning the Murid K. Madarsa? <coughs> Every piece of evidence indicates that is the hub of terror against India in Punjab. And as Mr. Parthasarthi has brought out, it's public record that the government of Punjab is actually funding them, calling them charitable. If they are charitable, you are ipso facto funding terror groups which are eventually going to eat into you. And that is what the RAND Corporation says, uh, report says about and you. That's what we Let are going me also to... bring out two other facts. You said, if, you said that if Osama bin Laden had a price on his head, why wouldn't Pakistanis hand him over? Hafiz Saeed has a price on his head. Who's, who's handing him over to America or anywhere else? You say that, you know, the, if he was out shopping, then Pakistanis would have no, seen him and caught him. But your DGISI, Hamid Gul, oh, says no, no, that no, Pakistan no. hit let him me, and we are proud of it. Let me interrupt you there. So the no, fact no, no, of the no. matter is that... There's a very no, big no, difference. You, sir, these are There's Hamid a very Gul. big difference. Sir, Mr. Hilali, sir, Hamid Gul was interviewed by me and it is on public. On this channel, he has said, yes, we hit him. He says, I am a friend of Hafiz Saeed. I interact with him. America thinks this is not good enough for friendship. That's why America has put a bounty of $10 million on his head. 
So if you people think that America is yeah. said, giving you the direction on how to fight terror, and then you've you got see, to listen is, to what the is, Americans are saying. This is now, you don't this is now and, and the problem is, the problem now, is Zafar Ilaili. Zafar Ilaili, no, one minute, one minute, Maru, one minute. Zafar Ilaili, Zafar Ilaili, the problem, Zafar Ilaili, one minute. Zafar Ilaili, one minute. The problem is that this is, this is in the ISI's genes. This is in the ISI's DNA. You see, you remember the Willie Bridget testimony now. Willie Bridget was part of an Al Qaeda connected group of terrorists in Europe involved in numerous plots. Zafar mm -hmm. Ali, remember that? I think you remember. He laid bare his association between the Pakistani army and the Lashkar e Toiba during his testimony in a French court. Not before India's raw or IB. <coughs> in a French court. And you know when he did it? He did it in September 2001. In other words, you have been doing this. All this right. Karachi project is an extension of All your right. internally right. now, of your internal me, activities me, to supporting me, terror. Now you know the Willy Bridget testimony. Zafar Elali better than me. Give, give me. Uh, I want to say two things. Please understand if you want to understand what we think. First of all, we do not believe that America's outlaws are our, our outlaws. Number one. Secondly, against Hafiz Saeed, we've taken him to court. It would have been very convenient if the court had accepted the evidence and found him guilty. We were under huge pressure. We took him to court. We did not even accept the judgment of the high court. You are, you are, you are, you are, your executive, your executive has said absolutely we nothing. Your interior minister, Ehman Malik, said Hafiz Saeed cannot be arrested just because India wants Pakistan to arrest him or the US wants him to. Your interior minister said he can no, only no, be arrested if you are provided with evidence against him. Your interior minister says when we give evidence, it yeah. calls it fiction. So, Mr. Mr. Hausafar, really, your executive, uh, your executive, our interior, your look, executive. You don't talk is, about Rahman Malik to me, I'll please. Talk about I mean, Rahman the man Malik is, your is an income coup. I want you to tell you, he was taken to court. He was taken up to the Supreme Court. There is no evidence against him. That's well, why we want proof. Is, is Salman him in jail is, is, is Salman, without? Is, is Salman Bashir said, so, so, with, so that you would counter, deliver. Counters, Mr. Now, Mr. Patsar, the, the Lashkar Patsar is banned in Pakistan. The Jamaat al Dawa is not banned in Pakistan because no evidence has surfaced Sorry. to us. To the Americans, if it has come, no, it has very come. Good. Let enough, them enough evidence has come. Enough Let evidence them present it to the world. Uh, enough, uh, enough, enough, and more, world. enough and Why more evidence has come. Enough and more evidence has come. But Salman Bashir, and I don't think he's an income poop, says it is his literature, not evidence. G. Patsati responding to you. Two points. I mean, I've listened to all this. The fact of the matter is that the Jamaat ud Dawa is not declared by the U.S. alone, it is declared by the United Nations as an international terrorist organization. Very good. And Shahbaz Sharif is funding it. United Nations is itself a terrorist organization. Now, Shahbaz Sharif funds it. Itself Mr. Pata Sahib, oh, just a minute. You are <coughs> such a good it, diplomat. It is. It is you it are is. such it's a good ambassador of your country to Pakistan. It has been declared Pakistan. by the UN. I have the greatest respect for you, but you are now, now talking about the United Nations that, as if it's a free instrument. When the Americans want you something, want they get it Zafar. done from the United Nations. No, Mr. Mr. Eleli, you already had a Freudian. It has been, it has been, it has been done by the UN. And the other thing yes, is, yes, but so what? At US there insistence, is ample evidence there are other things done just, by just, the UN. Just a minute. It's uh, no. This is also the Russians. The Russians have as much concerns about the Jamaat ud Dawa as we have, because the Jamaat ud Dawa trains Chechen <laughs> rebels and Chechen terrorists. Now, the fact of the matter is, they are declared in the UN, and all I am saying is, ample evidence is available about what they did on the Mumbai bomb blast, by, in a Chicago, given in a Chicago court, by two persons of Pakistani origin, trapped by the, who was caught by the FBI, involved in the Mumbai bomb blast. Fellow, one was a fellow called uh, Daud something, uh, Daud, uh, Jila, Daud Jilani, Who's near, he changed his name to David Hadley and another fellow called Tahawur Tahawa Rana. Both that have, have got very long sentences and their testimony is available in Chicago court and, about and the involvement of Hafiz Saeed, Zakir Rahman Lakhvi, 
Muzamil Jamil and a whole host of ISI officers. Okay, so here we have here we have a situation, so, General I mean, Bakshi. If you are willing, not willing to accept that you this this organization has been exposed worldwide of and still insist on defending them, I can only feel sorry. Well, I, I my last word is to General Bakshi. So, General I, Bakshi, I, I we have this man. Another important point is this denial, uh, this constant denial. Is now not what going does to the happen. Prime Minister hope to get from Nawaz Sharif? Exactly, Nixon? exactly the point I was oh, no. coming to. Exactly oh. the point I was coming to. So, so my last if point this, is to General this Bakshi. Is, this you is, see, General Bakshi, this is it. here's a golden this, opportunity this, this for us. It. Here's a golden opportunity. As as part, Mr. Patsarthi says, what does the Prime Minister hope to even after all this get by meeting Nawaz Sharif? I think what the Prime Minister should do is that he should get this man's confession and he should, through diplomatic channels, hand over his confession to Nawaz Sharif. Not go and meet him, because otherwise we, we have a golden opportunity, G.D. Bakshi, of getting this man's live testimony and presenting his, it as evidence That's before the whole world. We have. Now, can we do that, G.D. Bakshi? How do we extract that mileage? Let me ask you before I close the debate tonight. You know, I would state that the evidence that we are going to get from this man is first-hand and it is going to be invaluable. I think we should go to town with this evidence. Exactly. Every, and I, I'm very sure that the Times now will do its national duty and its international duty by making the world aware of what kind of a terrorism manufacturing machine, what a jihad <laughs> factory we have in our neighborhood. Almost every terrorist incident the world over can be traced back to its roots on the AF Park border, onto the, on the terror factory that has been raised there. And as to the point of the outlaws of America, they have become the in-laws of Pakistan. Osama bin Laden spent his entire life in uh, nine years in Pakistan. Out of those nine years, six years he was located 800 meters from the Pakistan Military Academy. Yep. I, therefore, 800 meters from the Pakistan. Therefore, here's the opportunity. Here's the opportunity. Uh, yes, he's the incompetent. No, not incompetent. Here's here's the opportunity. Here's the opportunity. Let us nail Pakistan. Let us get this man on tape. Let us ramp the international pressure. There was not a soldier around. Let us not go soft again. Zafar Hilali. He must be really crazy. Zafar Hilali, the ISI. The ISI is on the verge of being exposed. If you have friends in the Pakistani army, you can tell them how grave the arrest of Yasin Bhat Patkar and its consequences. Swami Sahab, the, the confessions yes. of a man are not even accepted by a that's court. The prob that's the, that's the problem, Zafar Ilali Sahab. That's the problem, Zafar Ilali Sahab, that your, your, your country, your, you have never accepted the truth and that's why you are suffering for it. The day you accept the truth about terrorism, you'll stop suffering for Sir, it. Uh, that's that's never the simple point. And, and I'll, I'll take that's this debate forward with you another day. I'll take this debate forward with you another day. I'm totally short of time. Gentlemen, I thank you for joining me on debate number two on the news hour tonight. Thank you.